Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Kelvin from BlackSunComics.com and Make3DComics.com and today I'm going to break down how I create print-ready comic pages using Daz Studio, Photoshop, and Comic Life. Stay tuned. <laughs> So this is a question that I get asked a lot, so I figure it would be best to create a video rather than address everyone individually, because addressing everyone individually would take too much time. Today what I'm going to do is reverse engineer a page that I've already created and walk you through my process for how I created that page. Some things to note, my comic pages are not the standard size. Uh, my comics are 6 inches by 9 inches, so 6 inches is the width, 9 inches is the height. And it's that size for no other reason than I just like that size. So here's the page that we're going to reverse engineer. It's a page from my soon to be released second edition of Black Sun The Longest Night, book two. Uh, you can visit blacksuncomics.com to check that out. And what I'm going to break down, well, the video will be bro broken down into basically four different sections. So first I'm gonna talk about organization. I, I know it's not as fun or as sexy as the other stuff, but organization is important. So I'll cover that first. Then we're actually going to get into the page layout, how I do that. Uh, I'm going to go into lettering, how I use Comic Life to letter uh, my pages, and then exporting for print. Okay, so first let's talk about organization. Never underestimate this. Being organized will make your production process so much easier and so much more efficient. This is something that I learned the hard way. When I did my first book, I wasn't very organized and it was just a, a mess. But since then, I've developed a, um, a, a process that uh, works for me so I'm going to show you how I do things and you know leverage what you what you think will benefit your own personal workflow so I'm just going to minimize these here so on my desktop I have um, what I call a project folder so BSC TLN02 this is just my own naming convention Black Sun The Longest Night issue 2 and in here I have a few other folders so there's a comic life that's where I save the the comic life file um, that um, contains the whole comic, uh, my pages, and then my templates. Uh, what we're going to focus on here is the pages folder. And inside here, you'll see I have all the pages for the comic uh, numbered, again, in a naming convention that makes sense to me. Um, for these ones here, sometimes I find that I missed a page or I have to insert a page, so I just add this um, this letter at the, the back of the, the, the folder name. So let's go, I think we're looking at page 21. So I'm gonna use page 21 as an example. So inside my page 21 folder, I have a PSDs folder, a renders folder, and a scenes folder. Inside my scenes folder are all the DAS scenes that, that I saved. So for instance, this is a scene, uh, page 21, panel three, I kind of name it accordingly. And then I save the scene in, in here. So I have, so if I need to go back and change things, I can do so very easily. I also have my renders folder and in here, let's look at the icons, uh, large icons. In here is all the, um, the renders that I've made from, from Daz. So I usually keep uh, the original render here and then I have a PSD. I'll, I'll show you the difference here. So I'll just open this in Photoshop. Here's the original render from Daz Studio. And then what I do is I have a PSD version. And what this is, is uh, the render after I put it through all my filters. So I have another video that talks about how I filter these images. Um, I guess I'll put a link to that in this video so you can check that out. So I keep two versions. And the only reason why I keep two versions is just in case I need to make adjustments to this for some other reason or I want to use a different set of filters, I have the option to do so. So we'll look at another example here. Here's the um, original render. I'll zoom in on that a bit so you can see. So there's the original Daz render. And after I have run it through the filters, whoops, wrong image. Let's try this again. Uh, this one. Uh, that's what it looks like after I've run it through my filters to give it that kind of cartoonish look. So I'll close those out. Yeah, and then lastly, I have a PSDs folder. And what's in here is the original PSD for the, the page. And then I have a flattened TIFF uh, file, uh, which I then move over to Comic Life. So 
Here's the PSD. We'll just open that. And I'll just close out some of these other things here. And I, I do start with a thumbnail sketch. My thumbnails are very um, simple. I don't spend a lot of time on thumbnails. And what I start to do is I'll just show you what I've done here. So the first thing I do is create the panels for the, the page. And as you can see here, there's really only two panels and then the background actually becomes the, the second panel. So naming is, um, naming conventions are, are very important. So you'll see here I have um, a folder with, that has all my panels. I have panel one, uh, panel two, and then panel three. So I'll just remove these and the sound effects one. So first I started with the, the background. I rendered uh, this image here and then um, I put the sky in here and the sky is just a, a picture of the sky. And then I put this on top. That became the background. Uh, for panel one, we'll just break this down here. So I have two folders in here, one called pop out and one called interior. And the reason why I call it pop out is because there's some elements, some of the characters that are actually appearing outside of the frame. So that's again, my own naming convention. I just call that pop out and we'll just show in here. So here's a uh, Yero, the main character. So I position them there. And usually what I do is I'll, I'll just give you an example. Um, let's go to renders, uh, figures all. So here is Yero by himself. And one thing to keep in mind is when you're rendering your images from DAZ, I usually, I usually render at a specific size. So here's my scene in DAZ. I go to the render settings, settings tab and the width or the height, I usually, I usually make one of these at least 3,500 pixels. And the reason why is because this page here is six inches by nine inches at 300 DPI. So dots per inch, dot, dots per inch or pixels per inch. And the reason why that's important is because if you want it to print uh, properly and not look pixelated, it needs to be at least 300 DPI. So I know that might sound standard for a lot of things, but I think it's important that I mention because not everyone knows it. So make sure that this is uh, six inches by nine inches at 300 DPI. Uh, this is actually the template that I use that helps me to uh, keep everything in order. I should have spoken about this earlier, uh, but this is a template that I developed and this helps me keep everything in the page that needs to be there because when you're making a page for print, the edges will be cut off. They'll, they'll call that the, the bleed. So this area here is the safe area. I keep all my text and important imagery in the, within this uh, black space here. In this gray space, anything that appears here could get cut. So I try not to put anything that's important in this gray area. And in this white area, these are things that will get cut from the page. So this just helps me keep track of everything that's on the page and ensure that um, Everything is where it needs to be. So there was my background. And then I just start layering the panels on top of that. So panel one, have my image of Yero, and then I have my pictures of uh, M. Belize, the, he's the, the other character here who's kind of giving Yero that work. And interior, this speaks to everything that appears inside the frame, inside the panel. And I should mention that my panels are clipping masks. Uh, if you don't know what a clipping mask is, you know, just send me a message in the comment section below and I'll, I'll tell you. But basically it's a way to keep everything inside this, um, inside this frame. So I have my particles there. That's a separate layer. My zoom lines, the ground. And it's just a matter of compositing the image bit by bit, step by step within each um, layer. Uh, panel two, very similar. Actually, let's go to panel three. All right, so there's not much going on here. I have um, 
the panel pop out. There's a picture of a Shiri, like that. And then in the interior part is just um, some grunge textures and I think a photograph. I mean, let's see. Yeah, that's a photograph that I took that I used as a texture for the background. Uh, your backgrounds don't always have to be photorealistic. It's it's when you're making comics, it's more about the emotion that the that the frame is supposed to evoke. So I'm usually taking pictures of textures just with my smartphone. I find something interesting on the ground. I take a picture of it. And here I just used it. Uh, I put a Gaussian blur on it. I have a grunge brush that I put on top of that and just left it as so. Uh, let's see here. And then for panel two. I think there's a lot going on here. So Yero and Ashiri. Yero on the ground. And no, notice how I've named everything. So when I come back to it, I kind of know what's going on. If for any reason I need to change things, I can easily find what I'm looking for just by going through the folders. So that's Yero. Um, here's some backlighting that I put. And this, uh, these, these are just um, parts that I paint on digitally just to make um, Yero's character stand out. So it's the contrast between black and white, which which helps. And let's see what else here. Oh yeah, then here's a folder with Embelezi. So here's the him in the foreground. Uh, here's a Shiri. And Embelezi in the background, so I'll just hide that. So you can kind of see what's going on here. Here's the left version of him. Uh, just so you are aware, Embelezi has the ability to replicate himself. So that's why there's more than one of him in this uh, scene here. And then I just had some other blur back there as well, just to add to the to the frame. And then here's my sound effects that I have up here. So that's all I'm doing basically. I'm just building up the image. I, I don't render full scenes from Daz. Rather, I render the characters and the background separately. And the reason why is so that I can import them into my Photoshop document and move them around however I see fit. So that, that's, that's basically how I do things. I know this is a general overview and I'm just touching on things as I go through them. But again, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section below. So once I'm happy with the layout of the page, then I save a TIFF version. And that's what you saw here. I'll go back to page 21 inside my PSDs folder. And here's the, the TIFF version. And this is just a flattened version of the same thing, a, a high resolution version. So if we go to image size, uh, you'll see here it's 1875 pixels by 2,775 pixels at 300 pixels per inch. Once I save that file, then I go into Comic Life. And I'll just, um, now it, it's already done, but typically what I do first is there would be no image here and there would be no text, right? I wouldn't do this yet. So just be a blank page. And then I take my, my uh, TIFF file and just bring it on over. And then generally what I'll do is right click on it and send it to the back and then right click it, click, bleh, right click on it again and resize image to actual size. So my comic life document I set up to also mimic the size, the same size as my page. So each page is six inches by nine inches. So when I resize to the original size, it just fits. And then what I do is I'll add my text. So I just come up here and I'll just do this. For example, I have my style saved and I'll just uh, type my text, type my text. Now, of course that isn't final text, but I'm just putting that there to, to show you. Whoops. And then I can move the comic bubbles and do whatever I want. But again, I'm just doing that as an example that text isn't actually part of my story. And then you have, um, you know, your, your comic life document with all your pages and exporting, which is the, the fourth step is actually pretty simple. 
with Comic Life. I just go to my export button here and you would choose, well, I, I send this off to a local printer to do, to, to print out. So I choose PDF, I choose 300 DPI and I select all the pages, hit next. And then I get a PDF that I can send off to the printer and then they create a book. So that's basically it. So even though that was a broad overview, I hope you found it helpful. I've included a link to an article that will show you some of the Photoshop brushes that I used to create this page. It also includes a link to the page template that I used as well. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And until next time, take care. Peace.